Hello and welcome. My name is Pankaj Mishra. You're watching News 9 Live. Now, uh, in less than uh, or just 24 hours from now on, uh, all eyes of India and of the world is on Israel and the launch of Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 3, something that has uh, given a challenge to the scientist community and this time they have taken it up in a way that it should and it will succeed. ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 is scheduled for launch from the Sadish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharikota on 14th of July. Now, uh, the mission's primary focus will be the moon's South Pole region, known for its intriguing potential of water presence within perpetually shadowed areas of the moon, also referred to as the dark side of the moon. These shadowed craters acting as cold traps hold the promise of revealing clues about the early stages of the solar system. Chandrayaan-3 will replicate the objectives of its predecessor, Chandrayaan-2, with a primary emphasis on demonstrating a complete end-to-end -end capability for safe landing and rover exploration on the lunar surface. The decision to embark on another mission was prompted by the Vikram lander's unsuccessful soft landing during the previous endeavor, necessitating additional testing of the landing capabilities crucial for the lunar polar exploration mission. ISRO Chairman S. Somnath has highlighted the modifications made to Chandrayaan-3 incorporating a stronger and more durable engineering approach compared to its predecessor. The new version boasts improved instrumentation and sturdier impact legs to mitigate any potential issues. Additionally, a backup system has been implemented to ensure operational reliability in the event of any failure. Okay, Chandrayaan-3 launch is happening tomorrow at uh, 2.35 p.m. Our, our uh, very strong rocket, big rocket LVM-3 in its uh, fourth continuation flight mission M4 is going to launch Chandrayaan-3. So Chandrayaan-3 will start its journey after the launch tomorrow. So it will reach around Earth. Then it will travel towards Moon slowly over the next one month. Then uh, we are hoping that everything is all right. Then it will reach and land on the moon on August 23rd onwards, any day. So I need the blessing of Nagarama uh, Devi. So I came here for praying and seeking blessings for the success of this mission. So I thank all of you. You also wish and pray and trust uh, the mission. Countdown will start uh, tomorrow at uh, 1 o'clock. And there you saw the chief of ISRO with his team. The team of the scientists today had visited Thirupati Venkat Chalapati temple ahead of Chandrayaan 3's launch. Scientists visited the Thirupati temple with miniature models of Chandrayaan 3 to pray for its successful launch. <laughs> Definitely divine blessings also in order for this uh, mega launch uh, in uh, on July 14th, which is Friday at around 2.35 p.m. Well, joining us on the broadcast are uh, two names which need no introduction. But yes, uh, Dr. G. Madhvan Nair, former chief of ISRO, and uh, Ravi Gupta, former scientist DRDO there. Gentlemen, uh, 
please accept our uh, heartfelt thanks and gratitude for taking time out on this auspicious occasion, I would say, no less than that. Uh, Dr. Nair, to begin with you first, obviously, uh, first of all, congratulations to you and your team, the whole scientist fraternity also, for taking such a big leap once again, uh, venturing into the unknown as they have always been doing. Uh, Dr. Nair, your initial thoughts on the big day tomorrow and your uh, uh, hopes and aspirations, what are they saying? Uh, well, it's going to be a very important day as far as the uh, Indian space program is concerned. Mm -hmm. And the mission, as you have explained, is uh, going to be a very complex one. The GSLD Mars rocket will carry the composite spacecraft around the Earth and then later it will be slowly raised to the uh, orbital heights, reaching up to the moon. From there, it will be uh, captured into the lunar orbit. Mm -hmm. And after stabilizing and verifying all the performance, it is going to land on the surface of the moon. Again, after landing, the rover will come out and it has to do the exploration. As you can see, there's a series of uh, uh, activities which have to take place successfully. ISO is known for its uh, quality and reliability. Last time, uh, the target was missed very narrowly, uh, just about two kilometers above the lunar surface, something went wrong, and mm -hmm. uh, the the entire module crashed on the moon. Mm -hmm. This time, as uh, Dr. Somnath has explained, uh, they have investigated various possible reasons for such an anomaly and uh, performance deviation and all those have been set right. And mm -hmm. again, a large number of simulations have been carried out. That gives the confidence that we will be able to achieve the target without any glitch. But as you know, this is an extremely complex operation, especially uh, entering the moon uh, orbit, and from there, descending slowly to the lunar surface, a big challenge. You know, on the Earth, we once we break the orbit, mm -hmm. uh, we enter the atmosphere, and there is the atmospheric drag, which helps in reducing the velocity. And finally, with a set of parachutes, it slow down to touchdown speeds, acceptable uh, level. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the moon, this kind of uh, luxury is not available. There's no atmosphere. So mm -hmm. entire operation has to be done by a set of rocket engines, the control system on board, the sensors like the stereoscopic cameras, laser ranging system, and so on. All these instruments have to work perfectly. And mm -hmm. also, uh, the entire territory is unknown. The, the, right. uh, la, la, uh, on the Earth, most of the regions where we attempt to land, etc., is known. And one can definitely find it perfectly. But here, we are going to an unknown territory. And with a totally uh, blind type of landing and mm -hmm. uh, we believe the onboard instruments will help us in steering it properly and mm -hmm. uh, reducing the speed to the touchdown velocity which is needed and ensure a soft landing. After landing there, again, mm -hmm. we have to watch for the temperature conditions. As you have said that uh, is the dark side of the moon, lot much of radiation in the sun, etc. Right. And we have to see that uh, all the instruments are kept warm enough to perform its duty. Mm -hmm. And once the rover comes out, again, we don't know what is the terrain, what are the type of obstacles around. Mm -hmm. So those have to be mapped by the camera and then work out a path through which the rover will move around and do the experiments on the surface of the moon. So this is a really, uh, really exciting event, mm -hmm. but at the same time, full of challenges and uh, one can have any extra, uh, of course, uh, thorough testing is done, but still, if there is an unknown glitch uh, props up, we may have a problem, but mm -hmm. I hope it will not happen. And uh, Chairman Esso has uh, prayed at the Zilberi Chamber, and I'm sure there's a practice all, the, all these years. And uh, certainly the Divine Grace will be there to have this mission successful. Right. Uh, prophetic words there, uh, uh, Dr. Nair. Uh, thank you so much. Stay with us. Uh, Ravi Gupta is also there. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gupta, for taking time out. Uh, your initial thoughts, uh, beginning with also the objectives of uh, Chandrayaan-3. See, Chandrayaan-3 has uh, 
several objectives. The primary two objectives are enhancement in the knowledge level, knowledge related to the process of reaching the moon, as well as knowledge about uh, the moon, the moon surface, the kind mm -hmm. of radiation that is coming on the moon, as well as this time there is one more experiment looking back towards the Earth. Right. The aim is that we uh, we know that the Earth is a habitable planet. We are living after all on Earth. So what kind of signatures, life signatures are there on the moon? Uh, when, we, when the Earth is visualized from a distance, say from moon, what kind of signatures it is seen? Now, what, why it is needed? Because if we are looking at life elsewhere in the space, then we have to look for certain signals. So those signatures which we generate, these will be helpful in search for uh, life elsewhere in the universe. So that, as I said, this is one primary objective is the knowledge generation. Then right. the second primary objective is the technology demonstration for the technologies needed to go to the moon and land on the moon, do a soft landing, and mm -hmm. carry out the required uh, tasks. So these two are the primary objectives of this mission, and I am sure that these will be achieved. Mm -hmm. Last time also when we went there, as Dr. Uh, Madhwan sir has very beautifully explained, mm -hmm. we had, I, I call it a great success. I don't know, there is no question of yes. failure. Because yes, yes, indeed, whatever, indeed, it's a success, yeah. Yeah, whatever happened, first of all, the orbiter is there instead of one year, it will be available for almost six to seven years. It's a grand success. But more than that, whatever small glitch happened, in fact, I won't call it a glitch. It was some kind of a design in the software where certain parameters have been scattered for. Mm -hmm. Now, no software can take care of 100% parameters. Now, when the parameters went beyond those uh, limits set in the software, then the problem occurred, which was not envisaged earlier. As a result, what has happened? As I said, the primary one of the primary objective of Chandrayaan 2 as well as Chandrayaan 3 or any other mission is knowledge generation. Now, this mm -hmm. uh, the whatever uh, happened during that uh, uh, this uh, Chandrayaan 2 analysis of that the failure analysis has given us immense information about what can go wrong. Hmm. So, hmm. had it been, uh, we have had successfully landing, landed, as compared to that, now today we are much more enlightened, much more knowledgeable about the entire process, and I'm sure that this time it is going to be a grand success. Right. Uh, definitely, our best wishes are there. Uh, uh, Dr. Nair, also uh, talking about in terms of uh, landing and, uh, you know, preventing or making it uh, doubly sure, ensuring that... Uh, all goes well. In, any lessons that have been taken from uh, Chandrayaan 2 and how they have built up on uh, the previous experiences? Uh, certainly, uh, as uh, uh, this point brought earlier, the mission up to about two kilometers above the surface of the moon was perfect. Mm -hmm. It planned as per the planned trajectory it went. But then the entire platform has to be kept floating with mm -hmm. the thrust from the rockets. And this has to be very precisely controlled. There right. can be many reasons why it can fail. Suppose any of the thruster is giving a lower thrust than what is expected. And uh, suppose there is a misalignment in the thrust value. Or uh, if there is a, a stereoscope camera images, if there are problems, and mm -hmm. uh, in algorithm used for uh, controlling and uh, velocity as well as attitude together, mm -hmm. there could be a problem. So if any one of these elements uh, fail, we have uh, this ends uh, with self will come. The data which was available in the last few seconds were very meager to clearly pinpoint such a reason. But what uh, ISRO has taken the approach is to look at all aspects, irrespective of whether it was successful or failure, and then uh, revisit the design adequacy, the limits of operation, and also, in case uh, it uh, any of the subsystem malfunctions, what mm -hmm. kind of redundancies can be provided, how salvage operation can be done, etc. All this has to be discussed over the last few years. And mm -hmm. the result is that a lot of uh, strengthening of the uh, thrusters and the landing gear have been done. 
and again the the algorithm has been revisited, redesigned, and the safeguards have been built in. And again, afterwards, a large number of simulations for nominal flight as well as off nominal flight has been done, mm -hmm. and uh, that gives us uh, reasonable confidence that uh, we should be able to achieve this time without any uh, major issue. Right. and land successfully on the surface of the moon. Augurs well uh, for uh, India's place uh, exploration measures. But nonetheless, thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, taking time out, sharing your views. Uh, uh, Dr. Nair, uh, Mr. Ravi Gupta, uh, with your inputs, your views, uh, uh, not just me, but the viewers also, uh, you know, leave uh, this place much informed, well informed, ahead of uh, the much awaited, much anticipated, and our best wishes are there for uh, the launch of Chandrayaan-3. To you and to your team, thank you so much for putting in so much effort and taking time out. So, obviously, two names uh, from uh, the Indian space uh, exploration uh, sector, Dr. G. Madhavan Nair, former chief of uh, ISRO, and uh, Ravi Gupta, former ISRO scientist. A very noted name and face uh, when it comes to uh, information and uh, aspects related to exploration of uh, outer space. Uh, nonetheless, News 9 Live would be bringing you special broadcast of uh, the launch of Chandrayaan 3 starting 2 p.m. tomorrow. Also at 11 a.m. on Friday, there will be a special show on the run-up, the countdown to the launch of Chandrayaan 3. Don't miss that. Thanks for watching.